You know, it's funny that these game developers, uh, they have the whole media, the games journalism media, running cover for them anytime they have a game that flops. And, you know, they'll usually throw out, like, the, the isms and the phobes and all that wonderful, uh, you know, just the way to deflect from criticism by basically blaming the fans, blaming the customers for not turning out for something that's a piece of crap. Well, now we have Kotaku with an article uh, talking about how this game, Immortals of Avium, proves that it's a grim time for single-player games. Now, we're not going to go through the whole article. It's, there's no point. Long story short, they want to say that this game, which cost, I think they said, $125 million, um, it had some people from EA, Sledgehammer, Telltale, that were at this company, Ascendant Studios. But this game had, like, legit no advertising. And the funny thing is they released it in between uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield, two huge titles. Now, Starfield, you know, famously flopped, but it was a very big title. It did have a large uh, number of players playing it. But their their thought is single player games are dead. Despite the fact that Stellar Blade, this game that everyone's freaking out about, is literally like the most wanted PS5 game this year on the Play Store. On on their wish list, this is the game that everybody's ready to pre-order. And it is a single player game. And yet it's des it's, it, it's indicative of the fact that when you give fans what they want, they will show up for it. They will, they will spend their money on it. Contrary to this, you have studios like Insomniac, where they do all the virtue signaling. I mean, we've talked about their association with Sweet Baby Inc. before, where everything, I mean, look, they've changed their, their logo for this month to the Black History Month colors, which also are the Palestinian flag colors, ironically. I don't know how that happened, but that's a weird irony. You know, putting out their Black History Month statement, and don't forget they also had their... Uh, in the leaks about um, well, a couple months ago, their inclusivity training, which is basically just racist. It's just racism, but it's racism towards people who aren't, who, basically towards anybody who's, uh, you know, white. They can be racist towards because you can't be racist against white people, right? <laughs> I mean, and then we see Crystal Dynamics over here sharing uh, this little warning before the Tomb Raider games, saying the games in this collection contain offensive depictions of people and cultures rooted in racial and ethnic prejudices. Melanie Mack, of course, famously massive Tomb Raider fan, points out that they had to have this warning about racist stereotypes depicting cannibals. Meanwhile, in their reboot trilogy, you kill a native girl's dad who wants to sacrifice her in a barbaric ritual. I mean, just, it's like, okay, whatever. Focusing on, like, the wrong things, apparently. Um, ironically, though, we see this a lot. The, the deflection, the blaming the fans. Uh, Speaking of Sweet Baby Inc., uh, Amy Lee Shaw, who writes for Sweet Baby Inc., she used the death of Kevin Conroy, uh, the voice of Batman, to try to deflect from criticism about Suicide Squad and how bad the game was. Um, and just, you know, that game was a massive flop. Again, showing that if you're not making something for the customers, not making something for the actual fans, for the gamers, you're not going to do well. You're, you're going to have a hard time with it. But again, all they have is deflection. All they have is, you know, blame and... Uh, istophobe, you know, just name calling. So now what we see today, a ton of places, a ton of uh, online journals are running with this this story about how one in five gamers are LGBTQ+, but over half face harassment online, and there's not nearly enough representation of these this protected class of people in games. So we, I went straight to the source here, the gamer. Always the best one when you have this kind of crap. They're the best one to go with. Uh, and it's from GLAAD, which is a very controversial organization had, that had a study surveying over a thousand people in the U.S. found that the number of LGBTQ plus gamers is growing, but harassment is still a major problem. Now, I don't know about you. I play a lot of games, single player and online. I play like Hell Let Loose. I'll play Insurgency. I'll play Call of Duty and occasionally. Like I haven't had that installed on my computer for a year or two, but I have played it. Um... Chivalry 2 or uh, any medieval game uh, hell there's a ton of them you could think of that I've played never once does my opponent or my teammate's sexuality come up ever it's never a conversation we have but somehow these people face harassment online so it says according to a new glide report one in five gamers surveyed are LGBTQ plus and we're going to come back to that in a second but 38% feel they sometimes don't belong in the gaming community maybe they don't I'm I'm just I'm not I'm not saying anything about their personal life choices. I'm saying if you feel like you don't belong somewhere, ask yourself why. Okay? Maybe look, if if I feel out of place in a women's underwear section as a heterosexual male, maybe it's because I don't wear women's underwear. <laughs> maybe it's okay if I feel out of place. 
It says a staggering 42% report that they even avoid playing a game because they thought they would be harassed. Thought they would be harassed. Not that they were. Thought they'd be harassed. As reported by Eurogamer, 52% of LGBTQ gamers who took part in the survey report facing abuse online over half the community. 27% even report having completely quit a game due to the harassment they faced. And I guarantee you they don't have any of the receipts. There's no screenshots. There's no link to anything that actually shows the evidence of it. It's just, I felt harassed. I felt targeted. Now, I don't want to obsess about this too much. I'm just going to leave it at this. The thing that I find really suspect, because a lot of this says that it's only like 2%, 2.5% of games feature the LGBTQ alphabet people. But 38 to 40% of, of gamers are what? LGBTQ+. plus. Okay, so first of all, I think that number is massively inflated. And secondly... When you look at the study about Gen Z and how much, uh, how many people in Gen Z identify as some sort of LGBTQ+, you also have to look at the amount of those that are either self-diagnosed or actually diagnosed as autistic. Um, all sorts of them having depression and on SSRIs and everything else. These are not statistics that are going to be accurately reported because of the fact that a lot of these people, a lot of these kids are going to grow out of thinking that they are bisexual or demisexual. You can literally say, I'm bisexual and only have heterosexual relationships and fall under this umbrella, okay? You can literally fall under this umbrella and never have any skin in the game. So I think these numbers are massively inflated. Let me know what you guys think. I think this is all a bunch of crap, as usual, but uh, curious to hear your thoughts down below. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching the video. We do have two channels, one for daily uploads, the other one for more of my live streams and hot takes. Uh, links to both are down below, as well as the ability to join as a channel member for as little as $3 a month, and that'll greatly help us out. Much appreciated. We also have links to our Etsy accounts down below, as well as our website. We also have Locals and Subscribestar. If you didn't want to support us on YouTube, you can support us through those. Thanks again for being here, and we will see you on the next one.